What's up guys, so this video is going to be a continuation on my self-driving car video that I made a few months ago and since then I've added some pretty cool features to this uh, project that I wasn't able to do in my previous video. Those two features are lane changing so the car can drive on either, either side of the lane and be able to change lanes uh, depending on when I, if I tell it to drive on the right side it should immediately switch to the right side or if I tell it to drive on the left side, it should immediately switch to the left side of the lane and drive there. And the second addition that I've added is obstacle detection. So the car can actually detect an obstacle and immediately change lanes. Although the obstacle detection actually has nothing to do with uh, neural networks, it's actually an if statement. I'll get into that a little bit later. So the main issue that I faced in my last project, the main thing that was limiting this project was the fact that I wasn't able to train um, the network on a video card. I've been stuck training it on a CPU, which is about 20 times slower. So it's a little bit ridiculous to train a large neural network to be able to, to, be able to drive on a lane just by seeing an image. So I've had to use some tricks to be able to do this. And secondly, I just want to say that I've ordered parts for a new PC that I'm building. That should greatly improve the size of a network, the size of a network that I'm able to train uh, in the future. In particular for this project, the trick that I've come up with is um, distributed uh, convolution neural network. And that means um, instead of using one giant convol uh, convolutional neural network that can drive on both sides of the lane, I have um, distributed the work load basically to a left brain and a right brain so the left brain can drive on the left side of the lane and the right brain can drive on the right side of the lane uh, and basically they don't know how to drive on the other side of the lane but what they can do is if they do find themselves on the other side of the lane they just they'll attempt to switch the lane to the correct lane to drive on and I'm just gonna run this now because it might get a little confusing so it's better to just showcase this than just talk about it. So the setup is pretty much the same as before in my previous video. Uh, Unity here has a car model and is running the server. The Python um, is using the Curious Machine Learning Library to make a prediction based on an image that we get from this camera in the top left corner. Um, essentially, it's a 50 pixel by 50 pixel image just fed into our neural network to predict what the car should be doing. But there's one additional information that we um, add now, which is basically the information from the user or the car itself, depending on if it sees an obstacle, and which is which brain should it be predicting for. So if we, so if we as a user wanted to drive on the left side of the lane, then we need to tell um, Python here that okay, well we want you to use the left brain to make a prediction on this image, or use the right brain to make a prediction on this image, depending on which side of the road you want to drive on. Initially, it starts; it wants to drive on the left side of the lane. You can see that there are two um, predictions here: one on the left side and one on the right side, and. Um, the right side one is blacked out because we're not using the right brain we're using the left brain to drive on the left side of the road and now I can press the A or D key to tell it to change lanes so you'll hear a little bing sound which basically means switch lanes so suppose I wanted to switch um, lanes so I can basically just press the D button and it will start using the right side of the brain and start driving there so you can see the car immediately switches to the right side and now basically it's using the right brain and the right brain knows only knows how to drive on the right side of the lane and essentially what's happening here is now I'm going to switch back to the left side and watch what happens so because I switch to the left side the car doesn't know how to drive on the right side of the lane so I've basically just trained the left brain that it ever, if it ever finds itself on the right side of the lane to immediately just go left because that's where we want to be we want to be on the left side and that's something that the neural network um, itself has learned to do right now the car is driving at 40 kilometers an hour I can actually speed this up and I think I can get it to drive even faster you can see that the switching is quite robust like I can actually change it um, in real time you can see that here so if I'm driving on the left side of the lane and I press the A button to go to the left side of the lane it doesn't do anything because we're already on the left side so this is the model for the convolutional neural network um, basically there's two of them uh, one for the right brain one for the left brain um, they're both the exact same so first it just takes one 50 by 50 pixel image three here just represents the RGB the image then just goes through some basic convolution and max pooling um, there's a total of six convolution steps that happen once we're done getting the features that we want out of this image we flatten it down to one by 800 this then connects to the fully connected layer 
I mean, in the foot and in the fully connected layer. Um, uh, in, in my previous video, I was using just normal multi-layer perceptron, but in, but now I've decided to switch to um, long short-term memory. Um, so there's, I believe, three um, long short-term memory layers. This essentially helps. So even though we're providing single images at a time, the network can basically keep that information in memory um, once it's uh, flattened down. Um, to a 1 by 800 pixel. So these LSTM layers can store some information about its previous state um, even though it's only getting one image at a time and this really helps make its predictions a little bit more robust because, because it can look back into memory and go I got some image in my previous state where you know there was a little bit of a bend in the road so maybe my output should be based on that information and in my previous video the car was basically just living in in the present state because it didn't know anything about what it saw before but now with LSTM they can save up information about the past and really help it make predictions of the future after that the final layer is just a dense layer before the output in my previous video for whatever reason I don't know why I was using sigmoid function for my output but I've switched to um, softmax which I think is much more appropriate to categorical output and something pretty cool that I've just noticed is that if the car is going around a turn and I tell it to change a lane, um, it'll actually find a correct method in changing lanes. So I'm going to tell it to change um, to the left side of the lane and just watch what happens. You can see that it doesn't make a sharp turn to change over to the uh, uh, left side of the lane. I'm going to tell it to switch to the right. You can see that the car just kept going forward. So if the car is actually going around a turn, um, it's actually dangerous to make a, a, a turn to the other side of the lane because there's a chance that the car will just fly off the side of the uh, the edge. In, in those circumstances, the car doesn't make this um, quick turn to switch over to the other side of the lane. It will actually just keep going forward, as you can see here. So that's actually pretty cool. I didn't. I, I just went over my joint training data and I, I saw that I was actually doing that uh, when I was turning around corners and it's pretty cool to see that the car has actually learned to do that too. So I've just increased the speed to about 100 kilometers per hour. Previously, in my previous video, when this car was driving on this um, texture, um, on this textured surface, it was not able to drive this fast. In fact, it, I, I believe it kept crashing when it was just driving about 60 kilometers per hour. So this is a huge improvement since then. You can just see how fast this car is making these turns. So these predictions we have to be super accurate uh, for this car, otherwise it's gonna go flying off to the other lane or off the track. So because in my previous video, the car was trying to drive on both sides of the lane, the, the robustness for each individual lane just wasn't there. It was actually quite weak. Uh, so driving fast which just essentially cause it to crash but now because each individual brain is specifically trained to drive on that particular lane um, the network can make much more accurate predictions but actually lane changing is quite difficult uh, when driving fast okay in this case it was actually quite easy but um, overall sometimes um, you can see it crashed so I'm still trying to get it to be able to change lanes when driving quite fast but this is still I'm quite happy with the fact that the car can actually drive this fast on each individual lane and not, you know, suddenly crash or go on the other side of the lane. Now I'm actually going to showcase to you guys how this car can actually avoid obstacles and it's pretty cool. When I wanted to change a lane, I would press the A or D key and the car would automatically change the lane. But now with obstacles, the car should be changing lanes um, if it detects an obstacle and I'm not going to be pressing any of the keys. Um, the car should automatically change lane uh, on its own and you'll hear a voice basically say danger and that's that that will happen if it detects an obstacle and it's the, then that's a danger and it will automatically switch lanes so i was thinking about having another neural network that basically learns to be able to avoid obstacles but then i thought what's the point danger. you know we already have i already have something that can drive on both sides of the lane so might as well just switch the lane when it sees an obstacle you can't see it here but this car actually has five rain sensors uh, each of these sensors are about I think 7.5 degrees apart uh, in front of the car and essentially the second one of them one of the sensors sees any obstacle uh, the car immediately switches the lane to the other lane um, so right now it's using the right brain so one of the car sees one of the sensors is activated and then the car switches to the left side so now it's going to see it again and it's going to switch to the right 
So that's basically what's happening. I was thinking about adding another third brain that was going to be able to detect obstacles and then maybe maneuver around it, but then I thought, we already have something. I already have. Each brain already knows how to turn lanes, so might as well just automate the process where if it sees an obstacle, um, it just uh, switches to the other side. It just starts, um, it starts using the other brain. I could have definitely used um, the neat network that I used in my previous video, you know, use it to avoid obstacles, but <clears throat> I think this is a um, equally as good solution. If there's multiple obstacles, this car would definitely fail and wouldn't be able to, or won't be able to um, avoid it. But, um, but this is a this is a decent solution for a simple obstacle avoidance uh, problem. Okay, now you guys should be able to see when the sensors get activated. I've also changed the obstacles to be other police cars. I thought the the red wall just looked stupid. I could still give it my inputs and tell it to change lanes uh, if I wanted to. Or I could just let it um, change lanes on its own when it detects an obstacle. So in this case, I just changed the lane on my own. Also, another thing, if you, you're probably wondering, right now it's driving on the right side of the lane. It will only change lanes if, if the right sensors are um, activated. So this way, uh, if the left sensors get activated, somehow the car doesn't switch lanes. So the car is now driving on the left, and you can just see that it just the right sensor just got activated because it touched the other car, but it didn't switch lanes because it's driving on the left side. Of course, I can't really end the video without showcasing what the car is actually seeing um, as it's driving. Oh my god, this stupid danger sound is really annoying. I'm supposed to stop the server before I um, just closed it, but now if I try running it again, the Unity will just freeze and crash. Well, whatever. I'll just not run it then. Uh, what you're seeing here is the vis visualization of what the neural network is actually seeing um, as it's predicting. So this is the left brain. So I've just picked out two filters at random. The bottom filter, as you can see, has more detail. That one is a bit further into the neural network. This is most likely in the sixth. Um, so this most likely is the um, sixth convolution, whereas the top one that you see here is the first convolution. You can just see by the details that in the second filter, uh, no, second filter at the bottom here, um, there's much more details um, that this um, network is able to pick out from an image. And I've just picked, uh, there's many filters, I've just picked some at random that I thought looked cool. So you can see that the top filter here, which is early into the layer, probably I think it's the first layer's filter, one of the filters, and you can see that it's starting to be able, it's starting to be able to learn that where the contours are and where the lines are. Based on that, it, the network is having high activation as the car is driving. And you can see that later in the layer, the car is basically able to perfectly see the edges. You can even see the lines on the side, it's able to pick that out too. So that's essentially what's happening. I mean, the in, there's many filters and each filter is, is doing a specific task of being able to tell a certain thing about, uh, about what it's seeing. Those basically just get combined and eventually the, cars, the car can then predict uh, with that information, you know, what its action should be. I, I, I already showed the model before. Just imagine having this kind of information, but also be able to have this kind of information of the past. With long short-term memory, the car can now look at some summarized information of its past and be able to make predictions uh, in using that for the future. I'll have a link to this also in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, if you guys are interested, let me show you guys what the training data looks like. It's just many images. There's a total of 14,000 images. 14,000 images in these uh, in these five data folders. Images basically train uh, both the brains, um, the left brain and the right brain. So about 7,000 images each for each brain. Oh, I don't know what happened here. I think the car fell off, but I guess it trained on that too. <laughs> but there's just so many more other images that these wouldn't, wouldn't even matter, to be honest. That's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to upgrade so that the car could be able to drive on both sides of the road while still being able to run it on a CPU. Soon I'll have a new PC with new parts and I think that will definitely help open up new projects for me that I can't uh, currently do with my current uh, PC. So anyways, thanks for watching and let me know if you guys have any questions.